do have a question for David. If you believe we have microphones on either side, so please raise your hand. And we can start with Johnny Miller in the back. Good morning, Dave. Well, good morning. Um, you've seen the playoffs. How far is this team away from being in the playoffs in 2016? And what moves would you like to make in the interim? Well, I don't know exactly how close we are, but I think we have a chance to be um, competitive next year. I, I think a lot's going to be dependent upon the continued growth of our players, our young players, some of the veterans coming back, staying healthy, and then also in a situation where we improve our club. Uh, first and foremost, we've talked about trying to improve our pitching staff, our starters, and our bullpen. That'll be a, a primary focus where we go after. We still have to have to have those meetings and make those decisions, but that's an area that those are areas we want to improve. The rest of the club is probably pretty well set from a positional player perspective. We will need an extra outfielder to complement our young outfielders that we have at this point. So, uh, and then you're always open. I We're just starting. I mean, today I got a call from a general manager that was out of the blue about some other ideas never even thought about. So, I mean, that's what the winter time is all about, and that's why you start having those conversations. Really, we're just starting those. Our time frame is such, I just came back from the Instructional League. It was my first opportunity to go down, see some of the young players, also be in a position where I had a chance to be in Fort Myers and see our facility, meet a lot of our development people, which was a good, very productive trip for me. I'm back here for about uh, almost two weeks, and then in a position where we're going to Arizona, and we're going to watch the Arizona Fall League players that we have, but also be in a position. That's where our professional scouts are, are going to come, and we'll talk about all the other organizations, and we'll be in a position where we'll set sort of our working list at that point on who we want to specifically target. Of course, we'll always be sitting down with ownership to discuss those type of things. Uh, Dave, with the yes. changes that you announced today, do you, is the staff pretty much now where you want it, or is there anything else that you need? Our staff is pretty well set. Um, we are in a position from a scouting perspective, professional scouting perspective. We've worked hard at trying to get that accomplished. Uh, it's a situation where uh, we've only brought a couple people on board in Frank Wren and really Brad Sloan, a lot of experience in both cases. But the way we're going to do our scouting is a little bit different than, again, not right, wrong, and different. We have seven people that are going to cover four organizations from low A to through the major leagues. So low A, high A, double A, triple A, big leagues, five clubs times four, 20, 20 clubs will be responsible. And then Gus uh, Quattlebaum, our director of pro scouting, will cover a couple clubs from top to bottom. And then we will have three guys that will be responsible for our major league coverage. And those three will be Frank Wren, Steve Peck, and Eddie Bain. They will be our three special assignment scouts. And then Brad Sloan, who's just been on board, will also help us in that regard. Those guys will also help us a little bit when it comes to scouting in the Far East or Cuban players if they come out, people that would be more of a major league and impact type of decisions. So that part of it will be set. Uh, Eddie's department is all set with the addition um, here. Um, you probably, most of you know Adrian because he's been around for a long time. We're very happy to have added him on board. Eddie's done a great job, maybe looking for an entry-level position to help out uh, pro scouting and international. But as far as the major responsibilities, uh, they're all set. And I also wanted to ask you, since um, we saw you at the end of the season, um, how's things going with John Farrell? And have you had to spend much time with him since the end of the season discussing anything? Or Well, I actually, I have. Um, I've talked to him on the phone a couple times. I let him go a little bit because, as you know, he was finishing his treatments. But I came to the ballpark. I came back into town Saturday night. I was here Sunday just to get a bunch of stuff uh, done myself, and then they had some workouts on in the field. John was here um, for that time period. We spent a good time period talking about um, some of his thoughts, also the vacant coaching position spot. Mike Hazen was here, too, so the three of us sat down and had quite a lengthy conversation at that point. So. I have talked to him. He's surprised on how strong he is uh, looking-wise. Um, he did walk up all those stairs from the field to the, the offices, which I was amazed at uh, without um, breathing too deeply. It still will be a couple of weeks till he takes that final test to see where he stands. But uh, he, felt, he felt good and he looked good.
Dave, in philosophical terms, as you evaluate major league talent, whether it be free agent targets, well, it can be important, but I think you have to look at every circumstance and sort of inspect why guys do certain ways. I mean, I and I can just reflect from my own situation. It's hard to believe, but when Justin Verlander first started, he didn't perform very well in the postseason. Part of it, he was so amped up at that time, he just had a little bit extra adrenaline flowing. And then over time, even though that adrenaline was still flowing, he kept it more under control and then, as you know, went on and dominated in the postseason. So sometimes it's just a process for guys. Um, of course, you'd, you'd love people to dominate any time you talk about the postseason. You'd love people to be Madison Bumgarner all the time when you, you go out there, but it's difficult to do. But it, it's involved in your in your conversations. Uh, Dave, obviously the season didn't unfold the way a lot of people anticipated. Uh, just over the final month and a half, the improvement the team made, what do you feel you were most encouraged by in that run? Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's hard for me to answer that totally for the simple fact, of course, I didn't see the club on a regular basis before that. But I think a couple things. One was the young players and how they performed. Uh, you saw that some of them took continued strides. And I think the second thing is that some of the starting pitching threw better at that period, during that time period. Now, they threw the ball uh, in a way in which some of them you would anticipate throwing, a la Rick Porcello, uh, who threw the ball on a more consistent basis. So defense was improved at that time. I'm sure that had something to do with it. But I think the combination that some of the pitching uh, took strides and the young players continued to, to move forward. I like some of the young. I think we have some good young players on this team. You mentioned pitching as a, a primary focus. What, what's your take on the free agent market for starters and relievers? And it, it looks like there are more high-end starters available than relievers. And how might that influence kind of your plan for the winter? Well, I think there's definitely more starting pitching available than there is bullpen as far as closers are concerned. Uh, so how it affects us yet, I'm not really sure. But there are many more starting pitchers available in the free agency than there are bullpen guys. So I'm sure that will come into play at some point. Again, we'll tackle that in a couple of weeks when we sit down with our group and discuss all the names. But I think that you're much more apt to be in a position where um, the availability of what you're looking to acquire is out there in free agency. Now, can you do it? What's the cost of making a trade? Those conversations are just starting. Uh, but I do think the starting pitching is deeper than the relief pitching. And do you have an idea yet from ownership about of kind of a ballpark figure on payroll for, for next season yet? Ballpark's really general. So I'd say ballpark, yes. Um, specifics, no. That those conversations are still to be had. Uh, Dave, just to follow up on Tim's sure. question, is, is that ballpark figure roughly what it would be, what it was this past season, or much of a difference? Or? Um, well, they're very... Um, desired to win. It's not going backwards, um, but I don't really have that specific number. But if you say ballpark, yeah, that would be safe to be. It's in the same ballpark. Okay. Also, um, in terms of health issues with any of the major league guys, does anybody have to have anything done after the season or anybody in any sort of have any sort of issues or anything? I'm trying to think uh, anything that we followed up on. Uh, Brian Johnson's been encouraging because he's been throwing down in the instructional league, so he looks like he's in good shape. Uh, I talked to Pablo Sandoval myself yesterday to see how he's feeling. He started actually working out yesterday. He was given a clearance to do that. Uh, Hanley's in a position. He's been working down with his conditioning uh, person down there in Florida before he goes away. He has a trip planned right around this time. He's going on a two-week uh, vacation. He's been planned for a long time. Uh, I don't think we have it. Christian Vasquez continues to make strides. He swung the bat and start throwing to some of the bases when we were down there. I don't think we have anything. Mike, anything that I can – no. And you mentioned going to instructional league. Um, beyond, I guess, seeing Christian down there, anything uh, in particular that caught your eye when you were down there? Um, well, yeah, I mean, it was in, first of all, it was interesting to see the young players. Uh, a lot of our top young positional players uh, – unfortunately, were, are injured or they're conditioning more so. So I didn't see a lot of them play. Uh, but I will say that it's easy to get uh, your eyes going. You see Espinoza and Kopech throw. I mean, when guys are down there throwing on the upper 90s to touching 100 and instructionally, that catches your eye real quickly. 
But there were other good arms, too. There were a lot of good arms down there. He's, yes, he's going down there. He's actually took a break for a couple of days. He's not going to catch, though. He's just going to swing the bat. Hi, Dave. Uh, have you done anything with the Buckholtz option yet? Not yet, no. Okay. Has he passed all his medical things? Yes, he passed all his okay. medical. So there should happen. You know, part of it, um, just, again, getting back, um, but no, he has passed all of his medicals. Yeah, Dave, you uh, mentioned that you think you might need an extra outfielder. So does that mean you're kind of set with the three guys that you have? They're kind of assuming that they're going to be in starting roles next season? Well, primarily. I mean, Mookie's easy to say, and I think um, the other two guys have done well. Jackie, probably a little bit more. Um, I think uh, Castillo looked tired at the end to me. Um, I was encouraged when I saw him earlier. We, we know they can all play defense. We know they can do the other things. Um, they're going to have to hit from a consistent perspective in, in Castillo's case, being a corner guy more so. I, I'm not ready to make a declaration, but if we were to open the season today, they would be. We like them all. But I do think it's important that we have the flexibility for John um, to be in a spot where he can still pick and choose when he wants to give those guys a break for certain pitchers. Um, but I, as of now, I would say yes. And then to follow up on Tim's question about the relief market, when you look at Koji, do you see a guy that you could use in various roles or and still pursue other closers, or do you see him as a set closer? For you well, guys? I didn't see him, as you know, myself when he pitched for us. His track record has been that he can handle the closing situation very well. Um, people have told me that he can fit different roles, but you also feel comfortable that he can close games still at this point of his career. Where I'm also, so I'm not sure, right now he's our closer, that's the plans are, who knows what will happen. But I'm also concerned that if the same thing happens this year, where we have an injury, Tazawa is much more comfortable pitching in the eighth inning than the ninth inning. As you know, we mixed and match, and, and I think Robbie Ross did a good job for us, but to say we're going to put that on his back completely going into next year, um, I would hope that we could find somebody else that could help in that regard. Okay, Michael on the right. Yeah. Is Koji's uh, rehab going well? Yes. It's going very well. Uh, they say he continues to make the strides. He actually started uh, making real strides before he even left here, so yes. Okay, and how do you address um, upgrading the bullpen? Is it just, I know you touched upon it just now with Jason, are you just looking for the best arms available? Are you targeting you know, lefties, righties, hard throwers, or well, how, what's your philosophy there? Well, I love hard throwers, but I love hard throwers that get people out because I've known plenty of hard throwers that don't get them out as much. But it's a situation where um, sort of just a mixture of getting the best guys out there at this point to get the job done. Where that's going to take us, I don't know. I'm open to trades. I'm open to free agency. I'm open to hard throwers. Now, if Barnes ends up out there, you have a hard thrower. Hembry's a hard thrower that's out there. doesn't strike out a lot of people. Uh, ideally, I mean, you want an arm out there that can be a power arm in some role to get a strikeout at a key time for you. I mean, Koji's a different type of guy. Tazawa can get that done for you, but again, he's not going to get it done in the ninth inning on a consistent basis, so um, he's not going to be that guy for us. So I'm open to basically at this point all of them, but I would like to have a power arm out there at some point. Dave, I think from uh, the time, day you were you took over to the end of the season was about seven weeks. Mm -hmm. So seven weeks, you were able to sort of get familiar with the organization and, and all of that and personnel. How difficult or easy was it for you to make judgments based on what you saw on the field in those seven weeks, given the position the team was in, sort of not being in contention, and just uh, being able to evaluate really what you what you saw over those seven weeks? Well, I'm... Very happy that I had the seven weeks because I'm not sure I may be nowhere near where I am today and we are today moving forward. So that seven weeks was very valuable uh, in many regards. I mean, knowing people, I didn't know anybody in the organization basically or very few people in the front office and on the field. So I think it's very valuable. But I think you also have to be careful that you don't over-evaluate based upon seven weeks. I think it was good that we were in a spot where um, 
We played a lot of clubs that were in contention. So you saw those guys dial it up in important times because those guys were playing against clubs that, that had something. They were bringing their A games every day. But you also have to realize it's September. You can also be in a position where you say, well, this guy might be tired for the first time. He's, he hasn't played this long of a season. So I think you have to be aware of what other people add to those conversations and not think that after seven weeks you know everything because you don't. So I think I try to mix it in with a pulse of what's taken place, but being in a position where you, you talk to other people in the organization, talk to your scouts, talk to your people at the big league coaching staff, uh, and just get as many different opinions as you can. Okay, Tim, over here on the left. You mentioned this a little with Castillo playing a corner. When you're putting a roster together, how much do you think about positional value, You know how a bat has to play in a corner outfield spot rather than center field? when you're trying to determine a guy's value to you, maybe relative to what it might be elsewhere? I think it's extremely important. Um, and I think that it's very dependent. I mean, sometimes where you play, I mean, this ballpark plays differently. Some other ballparks, you play 81 games here. We've talked about right field and the difficulties of playing right field here, center field. Of course, you're playing in Green Monster. This is the only place in baseball where you're doing that, uh, maybe other than Fort Myers. So... Um, but you're in a position where it's very important. And so I think one of the pluses we have, though, sometimes when you're looking for that extra outfielder that you have, they have to be able to play center field for you. I'm not sure how we'll all shape up, but well, at least we have three guys that can play center field. So whoever the center fielder is, and if you decide that particular day you're going to um, rest him, well, somebody else if you determine, could slide over. Sometimes you're sitting here, and I've been many times, but we have to have a backup outfielder that can play center field. So I think it is extremely important putting everything together. Okay, Jen, right in the center. Uh, you, had, uh, you said you, the position players, I guess, aside from the outfields, uh, is, is pretty much all said. Do, do you feel you have a first baseman on this team um, instead of obviously looking outside the organization for I hope so. <laughs> um, we're counting on uh, to have it. I mean, the reality is, I mean, hey, I mean everybody's an um, intelligent person here. Okay. If you say you're set in the outfield, we have a DH. The rest of our infield is pretty well set. Well, what spot does that leave open, right? First base. So we're committed to, try to, to making the effort, and I believe he's committed to making the effort handily to play first base. Now, I will say... One thing that's nice is we do have some protection if, in Travis Shaw that we're in a spot. We also have a young player coming in Sam Travis that's well regarded. So there's a little bit of depth right there, which is which is helpful. But I do think that yeah, that's our our focus and our plans. We we need to we need to do everything we can to make that work, and we're committed to it. I believe he's committed to it. Um, his representatives are committed to making it work. Now, will it work? Only time will tell. And just to switch gears a tad bit, going back to what you said something in the very beginning about um, the scouting department, you said um, just kind of reorganizing and with seven different guys. And was that something that you had in place in Detroit, or is that what, like, what was the need, I guess, when you came in that you said, let's switch this up to? Well, it was just a little bit different. Um, there was some. Some of that was in play, but we had more diversified responsibilities here than I've been accustomed to having. And I really like the idea of having people committed full time to these responsibilities, short of a special assignment where you send somebody out, specifically the Far East, to watch somebody or to Cuba to watch somebody. So to me, I like having the idea of having these individuals at the professional level on a full-time basis. And we actually, um, in Detroit, we didn't go all, all the way down to, to A-ball with our professional coverage. We were looking at increasing our scouting um, in that depart in the department that way also there. I don't know what they've, they've done at this point. But we, that's how we wanted to set it up. And I like the idea of having those three guys that are responsible for major league clubs. That's their responsibility. They'll have 10 clubs each, but they'll also um, cross over at times with coverage. So when you're making a trade, 
you're looking at that person. No offense, guy. I didn't mean you. And is is that? How do you feel about this deal? I like dealing like that. I like having people be responsible for that. And it was just a little bit different. I mean, there were people had the responsibility, but they also had other responsibilities that that took up a lot of their time. Not right, not wrong, not indifferent. Just how I like to do it. Dave, do you have an idea of how many starting pitchers you'd like to acquire this off season? Well, how many I'd like to acquire? I guess it depends who they are first and foremost. Uh, I, I'll start with one, and then we'll go from there. But um, I would say that, oh, it, with in our situation, when you have Buck holds back and feeling good, and then if you go from there. Our depth in starting pitching is pretty good. I, I don't think the back end of our rotation is going to be the difficult part. Uh, when I say back end, three, four, fives with Porcello and Miley and Kelly, uh, who we feel good about him coming back. Um, we saw Owens, he pitched well. We have Rodriguez there that he can take that step forward at any point. So I don't think it's the depth as much as that you're looking for that one guy that maybe can be your horse if you can kind of get him. And how do you look at the uh, the catching situation going into the, you know, after the, the second half that Blake had, I mean, do you look at him as your catcher going into next year or you look at it as a you know, just full-fledged competition with Christian or, how, you know, how do you see it unfold? That's a hard question for me to answer because um, I can only start with really Swihart, who I've seen. Um, Swihart, I liked a lot. We like a lot. You could see he needs to continue to grow from a defensive perspective, but he works really hard at that. And... People in the organization tell me that's how he is. He works very hard. He's a switch hitting offense that gives you offense. He's athletic. Um, he takes pride in his defense, too. So there's a lot of pluses in that regard. I mean, so I, I like him a great deal. Vasquez, um, I, I saw swing the bat for a week in five games in the instructional league, and he has been out all year. So... But people tell me he's an outstanding defensive catcher, um, handles the staff great, will contribute from an offensive perspective. So I guess at this point you say, okay, let's go to spring training and see what happens. And then, of course, we got a capable guy and Ryan Hannigan to back up. So I don't know which way it shakes out, but it's good to have depth in that role if that's what it comes down to. But, I, again, I like Swihart a great deal. Uh, people tell me I'm going to like Vasquez a great deal too. Dave, a lot of teams in the playoffs seem to have a lot of power. Do you feel you have enough power on this team, well, home run power? Yeah, I, I do. Um, because now yesterday we set a record, so the ball was flying out of there yesterday with all those home runs. And so, yeah, I do. I think we have enough power. I, I mean, it depends how the lineup shakes out. I'm more of personally, um, I, I like guys that can drive the ball in the gaps and hit the ball out of the ballpark. You know, you've got David, that's a big power guy. Hanley can do what I'm talking about. I think some of the other guys are more the doubles type guys that will hit the ball out of the ballpark. But I think we have enough of those guys that will provide us power. Uh, we don't strike out in abundance. Now, some guys do, but as a team collectively, uh, our strikeouts are down compared to most clubs in the league. I, I, we're very similar. That's when we talk about it. Kansas City's not a big power club. I think we're more like a Kansas City type of club. Uh, the key is how many runs that you score, and I think that we can score enough runs with our club. Now, that when I say that, that means your young players have to keep improving. They have to continue to take strides. Uh, somebody wrote, and, and they're correct in that you don't always see this. I mean, they don't always go straight up. Sometimes they level off. Sometimes they take a fall out. I think we have a few of the guys that are very talented individuals, um, that I, I would be surprised if they took uh, at least a big step backwards. But it's a situation where um, I think they're a very talented group of young guys, and I think that they'll continue to improve. And so, yes, I think we'll score enough runs. We may not – we won't have the power that Toronto has, but uh, hopefully we can beat them in another way. Well, not being an, having an everyday 
Well, it's a good question. Um, and I think that really in, in his case, one of the things that he has going for him, the versatility. Uh, we like him as a player. He did very well for us up here. He has versatility, which is great because he can play first. You saw that he played third. We are solidifying. We're trying to solidify. I don't know if it's done at this point, but we're real close to him going to play some third base in winter ball too because he hasn't played a lot of third base this year. I have not seen him play left field, but they tell me he can go out there and play left field also. So he has versatility, which can be very, very helpful. So uh, he has, uh, again, he has, like a lot of the young guys, has to continue that same stride forward. But if he plays the way he did last year, there'll be room for him on the club. Uh, Dave, you see a team like the Astros in the playoffs uh, with a payroll in the 70 million range, <laughs> Red Sox, Yankees not in the playoffs. Do you think that big market teams, big payroll teams, should be in the playoffs just about every year? Well, I think we ha we have a should have an advantage to do so. Yeah, I, I think that we're in a position that we should be in a spot to compete. Now, when I say that, it's th that's a real lengthy and deep question that we probably don't have time to answer that. But there's cycles that are a attached to that. I know I've been in a small market before, bef and we did well at times, and what you hoped is that those clubs, those big market clubs that gave long-term contracts, their top players reached that stage where they were in a spot where they went down. And all of a sudden, as they were in that down cycle, some of your guys were in the up cycle. You also have a hard time, and I think one of the advantages we have right here now, you have a hard time collecting young talent at times when you're a big market club, because a lot of times you're trading that talent or you're impatient with them, or they bring you that. It's hard to get them over the hump because of the added pressures of being in a big market. We have some of those players, which is a tremendous plus for us. But I think also, too, you, you have to remember, in some cases, the pain that's attached to those clubs getting in the postseason and having number one, number one picks or top five picks year in and year out. So. There's a cycle that's attached to that. Now, Houston and the Cubs, both clubs that are examples that have had some down years, the pluses that they have is they have good young players, but they're also pretty big markets. So they were willing to take the pain to get there, and now they have some good young players, and they have a chance to be good for a long time. Um, Dave, did you see that number one draft choice? I, I need help with it. Ben Attendee? Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't, unfortunately. He had a quad when I was there, so he didn't play. So you don't know how far, realistically, he's away from Boston? I do not. Not from personal, other than our people like him a great deal, but I didn't get a chance to watch him. Okay, last question here, Jason. I just got two quick ones, if that's all right. But uh, the first one is about Alan Craig. Um, when you look at trying to find him a home, do you, would you like to see if other teams might be able to give him more of an opportunity than you guys would be able to give him? Well, it's an ideal scenario, but I think it's also a situation, uh, for example, last year the club asked waivers on him to take him off the roster, and he cleared. So it's difficult to be in a position when guys clear, you can see that it's not an easy situation to make happen. But if he's not playing with the big league club, I, I hope something opens up from him, for him somewhere else, yes. And then uh, what do you see for where Joan Mancata might start next year, and um, do you have any idea? how far away he is from being the big league ready. Well, I didn't see him uh, myself either. His finger was injured. Um, not major, but it, he's still coming back from it. He is going to go play, assuming his finger's okay, winter ball in Puerto Rico, so I think that will uh, help him there. No, we're working on it, so I would say... Um, if we found the right guy, we would do it at any time, but I don't want to rush into it either. Sure. All set? Great.